Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and in this video we're going to review all the videos published in March 2019. Let's begin. March had slightly fewer videos than normal, and the reason for that is I had to be focused on the update for Battle Royale Tycoon, which added VIPs. The good news is I took plenty of notes as I was implementing the VIPs and made a nice video showing my process for adding a new feature into the game. The VIPs add variety to the game by being special guests with unique sprites and messages which help keep the game fresh over time. It might seem like a somewhat simple system, but in order for the final feature to work correctly, there are a lot of small things that need to be done. So in the video, I cover my complete process from starting with a piece of paper until a final implementation of the latest build. The game is out on Steam, so you can check it out to see the VIPs in action. There was a video creating the Vitality and Posture system from Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. This is a really interesting system in the game, in that you have essentially two health bars that work in different ways. So you have the health bar, which is pretty normal, it goes down with damage and goes up with healing. There's also a nice effect to show the amount of damage the player took in the last hit. Then you have the posture bar, which increases as the player parries whilst changing color as it gets full. When it gets completely full, the posture has been broken and a nice close sprite shows up to indicate that. It's a very interesting system with the two bars working together and the code is also written in a very clean way by keeping the logic and the visuals separate. In a later video, we're going to take this system and apply it to some characters while we create the combat system, so stay tuned for next month. Also this last Sunday, there was an interesting test with a livestream. It was an interactive livestream, which was essentially a test for a game that you can play by typing along in chat. I've been thinking about this for quite a while now, and this was the first test of what I think could be a really cool thing. So many thanks to everyone who showed up to help test out the code. Now that I know that it does work, I can start thinking up more interesting game designs for cool, interesting community games. So stay tuned to the channel during April for some really cool surprises. There were three quick tips videos. Again, these are very short videos that cover a nice tip that you might not know. The first one covered how and why you should always use enums for state handling. This is one of those things that is extremely important but might be completely unknown to beginners. I myself have made the mistake of doing state handling with strings when I was new, so in the video I cover actual real problems that happened to me which made me look into a better way of doing things which led me to enums. The second video covers another very useful but somewhat hidden feature of Unity. You can change the number of lines that are displayed in the console per each log entry. This is extremely useful for making the console either more compact so you can see a lot of entries at once, or make each entry more expanded so you can see more information or the log trace. The third quick tip deals with creating game objects, specifically the various ways you have of constructing a new game object. You can just create one completely default game object using the primary constructor, or you can use the optional constructors to create the game object with a name and pre-added components. This helps keep your code more clear, more compact, and also more performant. Also a summary of the modular sprites as used for guests in Battle Royale Tycoon. This is a great series that teaches you how to copy pixels and tint them in order to create sprites with a lot of variation. If you play the game, you will see that even with hundreds of guests, they are all unique. The playlist starts off very simple with just copying basic pixels and through the videos increase in complexity. So if you want to learn how to manipulate pixels and create modular sprite sheets, go check out the full playlist and then pick up the game on Steam. There was a video covering how to make a shrinking damage circle as used in Battle Royale games. This is a prequel element with some interesting logic. The circle has a size and a certain position. The white circle displays the next size and position which is randomly generated and after some time it starts to shrink towards it. Everything is completely customizable from the shrink size to the random position to the speed of the shrink. This script is very versatile and a perfect starting point if you're building a battle royale game. Then a very interesting video covering something which is very important although not many people talk about it. That is, learning how the Unity Transform Pivots work and how we can modify them to our advantage. By default, the pivot point is always in the center, which makes some things seem impossible to do, like for example a health bar which should scale from one edge instead of from the middle. 
So in this video, I cover how the pivots work and how you can be tricky managing transformed parents and children to get the pivot exactly where you want it. If you are very familiar with how transforms work with the global and local position spaces, then you will be better equipped to create anything in Unity. One of the videos this month was covering a simple sound manager. So in this video, we cover how you can play a sound in the simplest way possible. Learn how to create an audio source through code and how to manage audio clips in a clean way using enums. You can play either 2D or 3D sounds. Once you know the basics, you'll be able to expand upon it by adding more sounds and more features. Another talking video where I give some game dev advice based on my own experience. This one is covering whether you should make a game design document or if it is a waste of time. I cover the goal of a game design document and how studios of various scales might have different needs. A AAA studio will have very different requirements than a small one or two person team. In the video, I talk about my own experience and how I normally design my games along with how detailed I write my designs before starting to make a simple prototype. So that was it for the month of March 2019. I hope you found the videos helpful and learned something along the way. If you have any questions regarding any of the videos, feel free to post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.